Each character in this story is represented by a different instrument. The bird by the flute. The duck by the oboe. The cat by the clarinet. The grandfather by the bassoon. Represented by three hideous, nasty, ugly, smelly French horns. <laughs> Scary. Peter is represented by the strings of the orchestra. And the rifle shots are represented by the timpani and the big bass Drum. And so, if you're sitting comfortably and you're all relaxed, we can begin. Once upon a time, early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out into the big green meadow. Adam, there was a slight breeze moving ever so softly across the meadow. On a branch of a big tree sat a little bird, <laughs> Peter's friend. All is quiet! <laughs> chirped the bird gaily. behind those branches.
Just then, the duck came waddling around. and decided to take a nice swim in the deep pond in the meadow. You know, around the pond, sometimes you could hear not big bullfrogs, but medium-sized. Seeing the duck, the little bird flew down on the grass, settling next to her and shrugged his shoulders. What kind of a bird are you if you can't fly? said he. To this the duck replied, What kind of a bird are you if you can't swim? <laughs> Argued and argued, the duck swimming in the pond, the little bird hopping along the shore. Suddenly, something caught Peter's attention. It was a cat crawling through the grass. Busy arguing. I'll just grab him. <laughs> Stealthily, she crept towards him on her velvet paws. What are you doing out there in the meadow? Peter! Just then, Grandfather came out. Elderly man bent over. He was angry because Peter had gone into the meadow. What was he going to do? Young man, if I've told you once, I've told you a million times, this meadow is a dangerous place. A very, very dangerous place. The edge of the forest is right over there, you know that. And there are all kinds of, of ferocious creatures living behind those trees. What, what if a wolf came out of the forest all of a sudden and, and, and gobbled you up? Where would you be then, huh? Huh? Uh, you'd be in his belly, that's where you'd be. 
I'm telling you, Peter, once and for all, this meadow is no place for boys to just play around in without a care in the world. <laughs> Peter, a wolf, there's nothing to laugh about. It's serious business. Very serious business. Peter paid no attention to his grandfather's words. Boys like Peter are not afraid of wolves. Yeah, boys like me are not afraid of wolves. Wolves, stupid old wolves. Am I the kind of kid that's afraid of wolves? Don't think so. Uh, -uh not me. No way. Definitely not. Peter, who are you talking to? Uh... I ask you who you talk... Well... Are you making fun of me? Come on, boy. I've had enough of this. More than enough. I'm an old man now. I've got more important things to do than to chase you around the meadow every day. You're a big boy now. You ought to know better. I certainly taught you better. Oh, young man, you get back in that house right away. Before I... 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 No sooner had Peter gone than a big gray wolf did come out of the forest. Twinkling, the cat climbed the tree. Escape the wolf. He was getting nearer and nearer, catching up with her. And then he got her, and with one gulp, swallowed her. Now, this is how things stood. The cat sitting on one branch. The bird on another. Close to the cat. And the wolf walked around and around the tree, looking at them with greedy eyes. His eyes were deep set, 
brazen light. About the size of your hand. Big. something. But what? Gotta make a big entrance. He ran home, got a strong rope, and climbed up the high stone wall. One of the branches of the tree, down which the wolf was walking, stretched out over the wall. Such a scaredy cat. Come on. That's more like it. Now you fly down and circle the wolf's head, but be careful. The bird almost touched the wolf's head with his wings, while the wolf snapped angrily at him on this side and that. How the bird teased the wolf, while the wolf wanted to catch it. But the bird was very clever, and the wolf simply couldn't do anything about it. rope around the wolf's tail. Meanwhile, Peter made a lasso and carefully letting it down. the wolf by the tail. Peter on the rope. And pulled with all his might. Beaming himself caught the wolf began to jump wildly. <laughs> Trying to get loose. Peter tied the other end of the rope to the tree.
Wolf's jumping only made the rope tighter around his tail. Just then, the hunters came out of the wood. the wolf's trail and shooting as they came. Disobeyed me again, didn't you? But we... But... I caught the wolf, didn't I? Yes. Yes, you did. But what would have happened if you hadn't caught the wolf? What if the wolf had caught you instead? Well... The meadow is a dangerous place. I keep telling you that over and over and over again. 
again, but you just don't pay any attention to me. I'm... You just... I'm... I'm sorry. But aren't you proud of me? No. No, I'm not. Now you listen to me. Even a little? Well, a little maybe, yeah. yeah but, uh... Miss, yes, I am, Peter. And uh, maybe... <laughs> Maybe... maybe even a lot. <laughs> Come on, Grandfather. It won't be a real parade without you. Uh, I love you, Peter. I really do. <laughs> Winding up the procession, the hunters leading the way. Above them flew the little bird chirping merrily. Yeah, that's, uh, that's about as merry as we can get. Us. My, what great fellows we are, Peter and I. Look what we have. Ah. <laughs> hey, what are you doing over there? Everything turned out okay, didn't it? Listen, you'll never have to be scared again. Because I'll always be here to protect you.